Good morning, boys and girls. It's Mr. Rich again. Today we're going to talk about the sources of electricity. I have pictured on my first slide a roller coaster. I don't know about you, but boy, does a roller coaster remind me of summer. And we are just, what, three or four weeks short of our summer vacations. It's coming, kids. Please make sure you're staying healthy and please make sure you're doing all your schoolwork. May 28th is a very important turn-in date and you wanna make sure you gather your materials, gather your projects, your activities, and turn them into your school, to your teacher on that date. Today we're gonna to talk about some sources of electricity. We're gonna answer the question, what are some sources of electricity? Now there's my roller coaster again. And I wanna talk about two types of energy using this roller coaster as an example. Potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is the energy that an object has because of its position or its condition. In other words, when that roller coaster is at the top of that very first fall. There's almost like a five second hesitation where the roller coaster is not moving. It is still. And everybody on board is anticipating that first trip down that hill. Well, that is an example of potential energy. The roller coaster is sitting still, but we know something is going to happen soon. I also like to use the example of riding your bike. You huff and puff to get your bicycle up to the top of a hill. Once at the top of that hill, you rest. You're not moving, the bicycle's not moving. And that, again, is an example of potential energy. The bicycle or the roller coaster is resting but in anticipation of moving again real soon. Now, once that roller coaster goes down that first hill, once your bicycle goes down that first hill, the bicycle now has, and the roller coaster now has, kinetic energy, which again is the energy of motion. When things are moving, that is kinetic energy. And is it is that movement that helps to create electricity. So what is the main difference between potential and kinetic energy? Think about it, boys and girls, it's a one word answer. What is the main difference between potential and kinetic energy? Hopefully you all said motion, motion. So can you think of how water can be an example of potential energy? How about kinetic energy? Well, water as it sits in a pond, as it sits in a lake, or as it sits in a dam, has potential energy. If we were taking the PSSA, or we probably would have already have taken it at this point, there was a term going to be used called lentic, L-E-N-T-I-C, lentic motion. And lentic motion is actually when water sits still. So the lentic stage of water is when it sits still, like a pond, a lake, or a dam. But then we can turn that water into kinetic energy or the energy of motion or movement. And that word would have been, or is, loctic, L-O-C-T-I-C, loctic. I think of the word locomotion, which is movement, loctic. Now, the reason I bring this up is here is a source of electricity called hydroelectric power. The word hydro actually means water, and the word electric refers to the movement of electrons used to create 
electricity. Now water in a lake, water in a dam has potential energy. It sits there, not moving much, but the potential is there to create motion and to create electricity. When the water goes over the falls, as is pictured here, it now has kinetic energy. As that water is falling, it moves special equipment called turbines. And as those turbines are spinning, they then cause a generator to spin. And that spinning in motion creates electricity. So hydroelectric power is one source of electricity. Another source of electricity is geothermal electricity. The word geo means earth, kind of like geography, the study of earth. And thermal means heat, similar to a thermometer. Geothermal energy is used to produce electricity. We take heat from inside the earth. Inside the earth, there is hot water, geysers, hot springs can be found underneath the earth. There's also lava, which is molten or hot liquidy earth, just, just boiling, just dying to get out. And usually it does get out in the form of, of a volcano. Now that heat from inside the earth can be used to heat buildings. It can also be used to create steam and steam is when water is boiling and the molecules are moving and they're moving quite rapidly. That steam then is used to turn the machines called turbines. And as those turbines are spinning, they're spinning the generator, which is the special machine used to create electricity. I have a diagram of a typical geothermal power plant on this slide. Another source of electricity would be solar energy. So what is it? Well, boys and girls, I'm very sure you know that the word solar means sun, energy from the sun. Heat from the sun is used to heat buildings. My gosh, when I get into my car on a very cold but sunny day, the inside of my car is still very warm because of the heat from the sun. Heat from the sun is also used to heat water. Okay. Energy from the sun can be used to produce electricity. Solar cells store the power necessary to run watches, calculators, and outside lights. A lot of people have solar powered lights surrounding their property or surrounding their house. And the energy, the electricity used to power those lights solely, only comes from the sun. I have a diagram here of how solar panels absorb the energy from the sun. They convert that sunlight into what's called direct current. You learned about direct current during your prior lessons on electricity. Okay, that Direct current is then turned to what's called AC electricity, which is, are the outlets that you plug things into around your home, okay? Sometimes there's an overabundance of electricity. So that electricity then exits your house and continues down through the wires that we see alongside the roads and will go to a place where it is stored for other people to use. Now, Here's an ex a very new source of electricity. As you drive throughout Altoona, I teach at Juniata Gap, and we see these from our classroom windows. These are called wind turbines or windmills. As the wind is blowing, it turns the blades of these windmills which in turn spin and turn a turbine, which in turn then spins and turns a generator, and that generator is used to create 
electricity. So as you can tell, our sources of electricity today were all found in nature. In nature, nature helps us to create electricity. Now, make sure at the end of this lesson, you go to the science activity labeled for May 19th. Of course, as always, it's found on the activity page for fourth grade. It's a very simple activity, okay? Have fun doing it, please. Send me a picture. Send your teacher a picture of you doing the activity, all right? We both would love to see it. And as always, boys and girls, please do your best to stay healthy, stay educated, and keep in mind, summer's on the way.